today we are going to know some more things about fine material sphere consciousness. Uh, there are a lot of information. Now I like to read you. Please calmly listen to me. Just long description. Fine material sphere consciousness. Rupa Achara Chitta. This sphere of consciousness includes all the chittas which move about in or pertain to the fine material plane of existence. The realms in which gross matter is absent and only a subtle residue of matter remains. So this is the main character of this sphere. Very fine material are there, very fine form. There is no gross body. Rebirth into these realms is achieved by the attainment of the meditative states called jhanas. The word jhana is Pali word. Sanskrit word is dhyana. Dhyana. In Sinhala we always use dhyana. It is Sanskrit word. Pali word is jhana. High attainments in the development of concentration Samadhi. Concentration is Samadhi. The states of consciousness which frequent, frequent this plane in that they are qualitatively connected to it are called fine material sphere consciousness. Fifteen chittas fall into this category. Five wholesome, five resultant and five functional. The wholesome fine material sphere chittas are experienced by worldlings and trainees. Trainees means, what is the meaning of trainees here? Trainees are sotapannas, sakadagamis and anagamis. Stream enterers, once returners and non-returners are called trainees. Uh, trainees who develop jhanas within this life itself. Their corresponding results arise only in the fine material world. In the beings who have been reborn there as a consequence of developing jhanas. The five functional uh, jhana chittas are experienced only by arahants who attain the jhanas. Yes, when arahants practicing same jhanas, we call those consciousness functional consciousness. The commentators derive the Pali word jhana from a root meaning to contemplate and again from another root meaning to burn up. So there are two root meanings. One is to contemplate, next one is to burn up. Thus the jhanas are so called because they closely contemplate the object and because they burn up the adverse states opposed to concentration. The adverse states are the five hindrances of sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and worry and doubt. The jhanas are attained by the method of meditation called the development of calm or serenity, samatha bhava. This type of meditation involves the strengthening of the faculty of concentration by fixing the mind upon a single selected object all mental distraction is eliminated the hindrances are suppressed and the mind becomes fully absorbed in its object the development of calm will be dealt with in detail later <coughs> The object of the jhana consciousness is a mental image called 
the counterpart sign pati bahaga nimitta so this is another information about jhana the object of jhana is a mental image not normal thing it's a mental image your mind completely absorb into a pleasant mental object it can be a object derived from breath or can be object derived from blue color or yellow color or white color like that pleasant object is the object of the jar so it's a if i explain further um, it's like this now there is a state whole universe is blue nothing else pleasing very beautiful nice blue world there is no any distraction or disturbance only peace only happiness and blue color and there can be another uh, object of uh, uh, yellow color or red color like that uh, janas are something mind made mind made present world or situation or state mm. yes the object of the jhana consciousness is a mental image called the counterpart sign that is in pali patibhaga nimitta this sign is considered a conceptual object panya but it generally arises on the basis of a visible form and hence these jhanas pertain to the fine material sphere yes we have to use visible form visible object in order to concentrate con- concentrate our mind but after you concentrated the mind you need not any you any more you don't need that visible object it's within you the meditator aspiring to jhana may select as the original object of concentration a contemplative device called a kasina such as a color disk on which attention is fixed when concentration matures this physical device will give rise to a visualized replica of itself called the learning sign uggaha nimitta and this in turn gives rise rise to the counterpart sign apprehended as the object of jhana now fine material sphere wholesome consciousness this category com- comprises five chittas distinguished by way of the five jhanas each jhana constituting a distinct type of chitta the jhanas are enumerated in the order given for two reasons first one because when one meditate uh, meditates for the attainment of jhanas one achieves them in this order and the second one because the buddha taught them in this order that's why we call them first jhana second jhana third jhana fourth jhana fifth jhana Pascana wholesome consciousness each jhana is defined by way of a selection of mental concomitants or its jhana factors from among the many mental factors contained in the each jhana consciousness each jhana consciousness it is this that distinguishes the specific jhana from the other jhanas and bring about the process of absorption the first jhana contains five factors as enumerated in the text to attain the first jhana these five factors must all be present in a balanced way closely contemplating the object and 
burning up the five hindrances that obstruct absorption. So you all know, I think, what are the factors of first jhan? Can Tanya tell me what are the factors of first jhan? Yes, I can. Uh, it's like those things called the best catenary and the bone poison. Okay, good. Yes. Um, now, uh, these mental factors are explained. Initial application, vitakka. In the suttas, the word vitakka is often used in the loose sense of thought, but in the Abhidhamma, it is used in a precise technical sense to mean the mental factor that mounts on, directs the mind onto the object. Just as a king's favorite might conduct a villager to the place, king's favorite might conduct a villager to the uh, palace, uh, right, right. just as a king's favorite might conduct villager to the palace, even so Vitaka directs the mind onto the object. Is it clear? Now villager want to go into the palace, but villager can't directly go into the king's palace. He need king's friend. With the help of king's friend, villager go into the palace. Same way, with the help of this initial application, mind again and again go into the meditative meditation object. In the practice for attaining jhana, Vitaka has the special task of in inhibiting the hindrance of sloth and torpor. Yes, if you have sloth and torpor, it's good to do this Vitaka, initial application. Then you can come out of uh, sloth and torpor easily. If your mind is uh, sluggish and not working and you feel sleepiness, such a situation is good to think something. Thinking means you are using this initial application or the vitakka. Then your sloth and torpor fade away. So, uh, yes, sloth and torpor is the opposite of uh, initial application, and in initial application is the opposite of sloth and torpor. Next mental factor, sustained application, vichara. The word vichara usually means examination, but here it signifies the sustained application of the mind on the object. Whereas vitakka is the direction of the mind and its concomitants towards the object, vichara is the continued exercise of the mind on the object. The commentator the commentaries offer various similes to highlight the difference between these two jhana factors. Vitaka is like a bird uh, spreading out its wings, wings to fly. Vichara is like the birds gliding through the air with outstretched wings. So is it clear now? Vitaraka kyaane tatu gahana aage kurulla asata nagi. Vichara kyaane ukusahin paai paavi tatu gahana ne tu. Aane aage taan vichara. Vichara is like the birds gliding through the air with outstretched wings. Vitaka is like a bees diving towards a flower. Vichara is like the bees buzzing above the flower. Vitak is like the hand that holds a tra trainish metal dish. Uh, Vichara is like the hand that wipes the dish. Vichara, is, Vichara in the jhanas ser serves to temporarily inhabit the hindrance of doubt. Yes. Now, uh, uh, the opposite of 
initial application is soft and topper. Now, here opposite opposite of sustained application is doubt. Now the test pt. Pt derived from the verb pinayat, meaning to refresh, may be explained as delight or pleasurable interest in the object. The term is often translated as rapture, a rendering which fits its role as a jhana factor but may not be wide enough to cover all its all its nuances. The commentators distinguish five grades of PT that are arise when developing concentration. Minor zest, momentary zest, showering zest, uplifting zest, and the pervading zest. So there are five types of zest, not one. We call them in Pali Kuddha Kapiti, Kani Kapiti, Okkanti Kapiti. Minus S is able to raise the hairs on the body. Momentary says is like flashes of lightning. Showering this breaks over the body again and again like waves on the seashore. Uplifting this can cause the body to levitate. And pervading this pervades the whole body as an in under in in how is it inundation fills a cavern. The latter is identified as the PT present in jhana. As a factor of jhana, PT inhabits the hindrances hindrance of ill will. Yes, PT is the opposite of or the zest is the opposite of anger. If you have happiness in the mind, you don't have anger in the mind. So if you like to be without anger, good to develop jhanas. No anger, one who has jhanas. Yes. Uh, next one is happiness. So, zest is one thing, happiness is another. Happiness. This jhana factor is present mental feeling. Yes, this is a feeling. This is count under feeling aggregate. Zest is under mental formation aggregate. It is identical with somanas, joy, and not with the sukha present bodily feeling that accompanies wholesome resultant body consciousness. Now you remember under rootless consciousness there was a one consciousness uh, rootless wholesome resultant consciousness this is present bodily consciousness. So it is not the conscious uh, thing we are talking here. Mm, it is it. Uh, and not with the sukha of pleasant bodily feeling that accompanies wholesome resultant bodily consciousness. This sukha also rendered as bliss is born of detachment from sensual pressures. It is therefore explained as niramisa sukha, unworldly or spiritual happiness. It counters the hindrance of restlessness and worry. Yes. So, one remedy or the solution for restlessness and worry is happiness. If you are happy, then there is no restlessness. Uh, though PT and Sukha are closely connected, they are distinguished in that PT is a Cognitive factor belonging to the aggregate of mental formations. While sukha is a feeling belonging to the aggregate of feeling, 
Teeth is compared to the delight a weary traveler who experiences when coming across an oasis. Sukha to his pleasure after bathing and drinking. Yes, uh, this is the example to uh, show the difference of zest and happiness. Zest is something um, like a traveler who was traveling through a desert when he saw, when he see uh, oasis, he feels zest. And when he enter into the oasis and bathe and, and drink the water, how say, bath or I can't remember, bath or bathe, then uh, drink, drank the water, then he experienced the happiness. So there's a difference. The next one, one-pointedness, fifth character. The Pali term means literally a one, a pointedness, ag, state, t, ta, ta, a kagata. This mental factor is the primary component in all five jhanas and essence of concentration, samadhi. One pointedness temporarily inhabits sensual desire. A necessary condition for any meditative attainment. Ekagata exercises the function of closely contemplating the object. The salient, salient characteristic of jhana, but it cannot perform this function alone. It requires the joint action of the other four jhana factors each performing its own special function. Vitaka applying the associated states on the object, which are sustaining them there, Piti bringing the delight in the object, and the Sukha experiencing the happiness in the jhana. So I think now you got kind of idea about jhanas, isn't it? This is the nature of jhana. What I read, that explanation explains the nature of jhanas. Uh, so, this explanation is about first jhana. Now, second jhana. Second jhana, wholesome consciousness, etc. The higher jhanas are attained by successively eliminating the grosser jhana factors and by Refining the subtler factors through strengthened concentration. In the suttas, the Buddha expounds the jhanas as fourfold by teaching the simultaneous elimination of vitakka and vichara in progressing from the first jhana to second. Yes, now in all the suttas, Buddha says, Vitakka vicharanam vupasana. That means after eliminating applied thought and sustained thought, one attains second jhana. But according to Abhidhamma, um, eliminating or overcoming applied thought, one attains second jhana. And eliminating sustained thought, one attains the third jhana. This is the Abhidhamma way. But according to Suttas, both vitakya and vichara overcome by at once. I mean, at one one occasion, uh, you overcome both mental factors. In the Abhidhamma, the jhanas become fivefold by the inclusion of an intermediate intermediate jhana in which vitakya has been eliminated while vichara remains. This is the second jhana in the Abhidhamma scheme. In the third jhana, vichara as well as eliminated, as, as well is eliminated. In the fourth jhana, PT is made to fade away. And in the fifth jhana, upekka, equanimity, equanimity or 
neutral feeling replaces sukha happiness as the concomitant feeling thus whereas the chittas of the first four jhanas are associated with joy the chitta of the fifth jhana is associated with equanimity according to the suptanta method which enumerates four jhanas of the five material sphere the first jhana is identical in all respects with the first jhana of abhidhamma method however the second jhana of the suptanta method is attained by the simultaneous subsiding of initial application and sustained application and thus has only the three jhana factors of sest happiness and one pointedness like the third jhana of the abhidhamma method the third jhana of the suptanta method has the two factors of happiness and one pointedness the fourth jhana the two factors of equanimity and one pointedness these two jhanas are equivalent to the fourth and fifth jhana respectively of the abhidhamma method although the suttas do not mention the fivefold analysis of jhana in explicit 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 terms they provide an implicit implicit basis for this analysis in the buddha's distinction between three kinds of consciousness concentration accompanied by both initial application and sustained application concentration without initial application but with sustained application and concentration with neither initial application nor sustained application the first is obviously the first jhana in both system and the third is the second and higher jhanas of suptanta method and the third and higher jhanas of abhidhamma method the second however is novaya classified within the suttas themselves and only becomes intelligible as the second jhana of abhidhamma method so anyway this explanation just explain why there is five jhanas in abhidhamma and four jhanas in sutta mm. yes summary of the five material sphere consciousness Five material sphere consciousness is fivefold when divided by way of jhanas. It becomes of fifteen types when further divided by way of the wholesome, resultant, and partial. Yes, it's clear, no? There are fifteen under five material sphere consciousness. Five wholesome, five resultant, and five partial. if you know all these things <laughs> you have wisdom <laughs> if there are some more information if i am going to read all these things it will become more boring so i like to move on to immaterial sphere consciousness Uh, there are four immaterial sphere consciousness immaterial means in that realm or in that state there are no any four no any material no earth element there no water element there no fire element no air element no space element there. only consciousness in that sphere uh, in that Let's say even we can say world, but it's a world without form. It's just mind, only mind. Mind is the only thing there. Yes. Another question: In the fine material sphere, all the four elements are available there. there. All the four materials, are, all the all the aggregates are there. Mm-hmm. Form, feeling, perception, mental formation, and consciousness are there in fine material sphere. but in this immaterial sphere you don't have four other four are there you have uh, feeling perception mental formation and consciousness no four 
so they are four they this uh, immaterial sphere consciousness again can be classified into three as wholesome resultant and functional these are the uh, four wholesome immaterial sphere consciousness wholesome consciousness pertaining to the base of infinite space so infinite space conscious the object of the consciousness is infinite space so you may feel you are totally free i don't know exactly <laughs> you, are, you are free like you are in the space outer space but you are very comfortable now if you go to outer space yourself alone you may feel you are very how to say lonely you may feel loneliness but here you don't feel loneliness you are extremely happy not happy beyond happiness comfortable you are extremely comfortable and equanimous yes wholesome consciousness pertaining to the base of infinite space second consciousness is wholesome consciousness pertaining to the base of infinite consciousness and third one is wholesome consciousness pertaining to the base of nothingness fourth one is wholesome consciousness pertaining to the base of neither perception nor non perception these are the four types of immaterial sphere consciousness in immaterial sphere wholesome consciousness so what kind of idea you got when i'm reading this thing? there are some people even before buddha who have attained these states who are they in our suttas we find them yes ala rakala asit and buddha karam buddha this ala rakala and buddha karam putta were teachers of buddha before attainment of buddha asit was the teacher of uh, Suddhodana, King Suddhodana. So, they are holy people and recluses and they are virtuous, wise people. That's why they could attain these wholesome states. But they don't know or they couldn't achieve Nibba. That's the problem. Even after attainment of Buddhahood, Buddha thought, to whom I first teach this Dhamma. Then he came to his mind, uh, it is good to teach all Ara Kalam and Uddha Karam. But at that time, they had passed away. So if he can achieve this mental state, our minds are extremely pure all the hindrances and defilements suppressed up to the maximum possible day so it is good to achieve this jhana if possible there are also jhanas okay this immaterial sphere consciousness also kind of jhanas because after you attain this fifth jhana then only you can achieve these immaterial sphere consciousness. Without this consciousness, nobody can achieve immaterial, immaterial sphere consciousness. So, uh, those are the first four. And next four is immaterial sphere resultant consciousness. So, if you achieve this uh, wholesome consciousness, as a result of that, you can born into such a realm. There you find this resultant consciousness. There are resultant consciousness pertaining to the base of infinite space. Resultant consciousness pertaining to the base of infinite consciousness. Resultant consciousness pertaining to the base of nothingness. Resultant consciousness pertaining to the base of neither perception nor non-perception. 
these are the four types of immaterial sphere resultant consciousness yes. so resultant consciousness you get once you born there born into that area uh, and there are some more explanations if you born any of these realm lifespan of there is extremely low we can imagine now if you go to the first immaterial sphere of awesome world you have to live there 20000 eons even one eon is we don't know we can't understand we can't imagine now i think if i ask you can you imagine mm, let's say what can you imagine what happened within last 50 years 50000 years not easy not easy to understand if i ask you can you imagine last 1000 years what happened last last 1000 years even that is not easy so if i ask can you imagine what happened last 1 million years we can't imagine we can't think anything easy only some information given by normal scientists you can think if i ask can you imagine last uh, 10000 million years <laughs> so even is much bigger than that even even is extremely long so they have 20000 years as their life next one second uh, second sphere second immaterial sphere they have 40000 years as their life span and third realm they have 60000 years as their life span and the fourth one they get 84000 eons as their life span so it is extremely long period we can we can't imagine because they why they get such things they have refined their minds up to that much fine level that's the reason mind is the for an hour mind is the most important if you refine your mind that way you will get result according so these people they think all the problems we get because of this body we have to maintain body we have to feed the body we have to wash the body clean the body uh, even though we do that it become decay and old age and break so maintaining this body is extremely troublesome thing. So if you don't have body, it is nice. So thinking that way, they practice this jhana. They refine their minds. So once it refined to the maximum level, they will born according. That's, that's why this jhanic world are there but you have to practice these jhanas while living here as a human being yes yes they die because their power of jhana even after 85,000 eons come to an end because they have created something in this human world they have created uh, artificial mind very fine very yes very fine super mind they have artificially created that the, the power of that creation will end after 84,000 eons then they have to come back that's why it's not liberation
Yes, so it's good to learn Pali terms also because sometimes um, even Sinhala people not easy to pronounce these words. Akasanan chayatan, vinyanan chayatan, akin chanyayatan, neasanya nasanyayatan. Uh, some Sinhala people can't pronounce these words. Can you tell me? Akasa nan chayatanaya. Akasa nan chayatanaya. Vinya nan chayatanaya. Akin chanyayatanaya. Neva sanya na sanyayatanaya. This is the fifth dhyana. Akasa nan chayatanaya. No. Actually, according to uh, Abhidhammik way, it's not fifth jhana. It must be sixth jhana. But according to Suttantave, it is fifth jhana. There are two ways of counting jhanas. According to Suttas, it's fifth jhana. According to Abhidhamma, it's sixth jhana. <laughs> now it's correct according to Suttantave. There are, th th that's the thing I read, uh, there was a long description why there are two ways of counting jhanas. Uh, so according to Suttanta, Akasanan Chayatan is the fifth jhana. But according to Abhidhamma, Akasanan Chayatan is the sixth jhana. Mm. So, uh, same as this wholesome and resultant consciousness, um, we have another five, uh, they are functional consciousness. Functional consciousness pertaining to the base of infinite space. Functional consciousness pertaining to the base of infinite consciousness. Functional consciousness pertaining to the base of nothingness. Functional consciousness pertaining to the base of neither perception nor non-perception. These are the four types of immaterial sphere functional consciousness. So why there are uh, these functional consciousness? Because even Arahants practice these jhanas. Arahants abide in these jhanas. These are useful to attain Nirodha Samapat. Nirodha Samapat means cessation of feeling and perception. If, if an arahant has not developed these jhanas, he can't attain cessation of feeling and perception. So, in order to attain feeling and perception, arahants develop these immaterial jhanas. Now, this is the explanation about immaterial sphere consciousness. This sphere of consciousness comprises the chittas pertaining to the immaterial plane of existence. Four realms in which matter has been totally transcended and only consciousness and mental factors remain. Yes, there are only consciousness and mental factors remain. Rebirth into these four realms comes about through the attainment of the Arupa Jhanas, the four immaterial or formless absorptions, which are reached by the developing concentration beyond five Jhanas of the fine material sphere. The immaterial sphere cons consists of twelve chittas, the four wholesome chittas with which the immaterial attainments are experienced by worldlings and trainees, the four resultant which arise through rebirth in the immaterial realms, and the four functionals which occurs which occur to arahants who enter upon the immaterial attainments. So it's clear no? Four, four, four. One, first four, wholesome four, is attained by the worldlings and the trains. Resultant four is the result of also four. 
and the functionals are the uh, four attained by arahants. No. no, they can't see each other. They can't see anything. They can't see, they can't hear, they can't taste, touch. They don't have any of these things. They can't listen to Dhamma? No, they can't listen to Dhamma. That's why this Asita cried after seeing Bodhisattva. Came to Asita, ascetic Asita came to know that this one will be a Buddha in future. But he cried because he can't, he can't listen to Buddha's teaching in their he can't listen anything. Yes. And uh, even Alara Kalam and Uddha Karam Buddha can't listen. Otherwise, Buddha can go there and teach, teach them. Right? So they can't listen. That's the problem. If you go one of these realms, you, <coughs> you can't meet Buddha. You can't meet Dhamma. But uh, this explanation is there. If you become Sotapan first somewhere here in this world or in a, another world, then you can go into these realms. And then and you don't need anybody else's support. You yourself can attain Arahantra. But you can't become Sotapan in those immaterial realms. Mm. <coughs> so this is the explanation about base of infinite space. The first of the four immaterial jhanas is the attainment of the base of in infinite space. To reach this a meditator who has mastered the fifth fine material jhana based on the on a kasina object spread out the counterpart sign of kasina of uh, counterpart sign of the kasina until it becomes immeasurable in extent so have you learned the meaning of the word kasina kasina is something like this uh, it's like this kind of disc. It can be blue or yellow, mm. red and white and light, etc. There are 10. So you keep that, that kind of disc in front of you, con continuously gazing at it, looking at it, and contemplating blue, let's say blue, 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 blue. blue then your mind absorbed to that color. Then your mind don't or doesn't wander anywhere else. It stay with the blue color. Then your mind become extremely concentrated and powerful. So this is one way of concentrating our mind. Kasina, Kasina, Kasina one uh, technology to concentrate mind. So once you concentrate uh, to the extreme level, maximum level, then you can attain these jars. So kasinas are devices we use to concentrate our mind. But without a teacher you can't do these things. This is the problem. Yes, now, uh, then he removes the kasina by attaining only to the space it pervaded, contemplating it as infinite, infinite space. Through repeated attention given in this way, there eventually arises in absorption a chitta having as object the concept of the infinite space. The expression base of infinite space, strictly speaking, refers to the concept of infinite space which serves as the object of the first immaterial sphere consciousness. 
so this is a kind of concept not real thing you develop certain concept in your mind is it clear you develop kind of concept it's not real infinite space is not something real but you develop such a concept in the mind then it become real kind of real you can born there using that disk or the kasina <clears throat> looking at continuously and you concentrate your mind to the very high level then you can you uh, yes, according to even this uh, explanation you can spread the blue ka let's say blue kasina you can spread the blue kasana like the sky then you can uh, take your mind out from the blue instead of that you think it is the sky infinite sky so infinite sky is the object and it is wholesome also here the word ayatana base ayatana a base has the sense of a habit habitat or dwelling for the chit of the jana however in a derivative sense the expression base of infinite space is also extended to the jana itself so anyway you got kind of gross idea no what is this infinite space or what are these immaterial sphere uh, consciousness and uh, we did other parts tomorrow and yesterday kapil mahatya asked me important question here where is the access concentration we always talk about concentration and jhana and access concentration have you heard this word access concentration ah, then it's not no it's a big problem if you have not heard this word it's a big problem but there is a, a phenomena or the important thing uh, called access concentration access concentration in pali we call uh, upachara upachara jhana jhana is the real concentration access concentration is vicinity of jhana close area of jhana always before to attain jhana you have access concentration and after attainment of jhana or after emerging from the jhana you have the access concentration so when there is access concentration what kind of mind is there this is the problem there must be one of these consciousness because from one of actually not all the eight from uh, not this one and uh, this two and here also another two with with uh, knowledge here also another two with knowledge with these four minds you go closer to jhana just before you attain the jhana you have one of these four minds they are called access concepts and after you emerging from the jhana you again come one of these con, uh, conscious consciousness so they are again access consciousness so it's like this if we take jhana as this let's say this is the first jhana so this is the access concentration of first jhana this is the way you have to understand first you have to have this kind of wholesome mind from there you go into the jhana and after you coming out from the jhana you again come to one of these consciousness there should be joy knowledge and unprompted or prompted or there should be equanimity knowledge prompted and unprompted they are the access concentration okay now We finish today's class. May you be happy.
and it didn't die.